Hi, next I'd like to show you some simple examples on conditional expectations. So again I'm going to have a probability space as before, omega f and p, and let y be a random variable on this, on here if you want, on this sample, on this probability space. Okay, the first example I want to show you is that if you set as before g to be the uh, sigma algebra generated by y and now you ask yourself what is the expectation of y itself given this g or if you want what is the expectation of y itself given the sigma algebra generated by y or if you want these are all the same thing what is the y expectation of y given y then I claim that this can be chosen to be y itself okay how do I know that how, how can we see that all we need to do is to show that this choice so the conditional expectation equals y or if you want this function v equals y actually satisfies the properties of Kolmogorov theorem and then due to this uh, almost everywhere uniqueness it is then going to be a version of the conditional expectation. So property one, is it true that this choice of V or a conditional expectation, so this choice of, of, of the conditional expectation Y, is it G measurable? Of course it is because G is itself generated by Y, so by definition it's G measurable. Is it going to have a finite mean? Well, I forgot to add here, so let me add it now, that Y of course needs to have a finite mean, otherwise nothing makes sense. Okay, so that's, that's kind of trivial. And then the third property, is it true that the expectation of this conditional expectation V on any set from the uh, sigma algebra script G is the same as the expectation of the thing I'm taking conditional expectation of on that same set? So in our case, is it true that the expectation of V, which is Y, let me, let me actually write this out, is it true that the expectation of V, so if this thing is my V, expectation of V on any set G that belongs to the script G, is it true that the expectation of V on that set is the same as the expectation of the original random variable on that set? Now I didn't use X as in the theorem, I instead am using y because I'm taking conditional expectation of y on g and of course that's very very simple because v is just defined to be y so of course it's true okay so the first kind of trivial example is that the conditional expectation of y given y is itself it's just y okay so y works and that's a version of the conditional expectation and that's, that's enough for our purposes so that was example one Okay, example two, uh, let me add here example, okay, so this was, uh, well, let's, let's do it here. Okay, example two, suppose I have a random variable and I'm taking the expectation of that random variable, let's use y still, given the trivial sigma algebra. Remember, the smaller sigma algebra on any probability space is the trivial one. I just have the empty set and omega itself in there. So what is this thing? What is, what is this? Okay, so according to the theorem, this is a random variable V that satisfies these three properties. Okay, at least uh, V is a version of this if it satisfies these three properties. So it has to be G measurable. Now G in this second example, G is the trivial sigma algebra. What elements does the trivial sigma algebra have? Well, it has nothing but the empty set and omega. In other words, it doesn't have any non-trivial set. Any random variable that's measurable according to G must have this very strange property that all Borel sigma algebra Bs map into either omega or the empty set. Okay, so if, if V 
is G measurable, where G is this guy here, this trivial sigma algebra in this example, then any Borel set on R maps into this trivial sigma algebra by V inverse. So if I take V inverse of B, it is going to be in that Borel sigma, uh, sorry, in that G sigma algebra, so either empty or omega. In other words, whatever set I'm looking at, okay, either V will belong to that set with probability one, because every outcome of the random of the sample space will just tell me that V belongs to that set, or it will never happen because it's the empty set, so no omega will satisfy that V belongs to that Borel sigma algebra set B. What are these functions which are either almost, either always true, always, uh, the value of this function is always in B or never in B? What are those functions? What are those random variables? Well, those are trivial random variables. Those are constants. So B is a, co sorry, V is a constant. So if you, if you carefully look what this means, since this is true for every B, it turns out that V is a constant. It's a trivial random variable. It's not random. It doesn't depend on omega. It's not random. Okay? V is not random. So we're looking for a constant. This thing here is going to be a constant. Okay. So that was property one, or property A of the conditional expectation. So V is a constant. It's not random. That's that we know in this setup. Uh, it's finite mean, okay, so this constant has to be finite, fine. And then we need to look at the, the next example, example C, which says that this constant, example C, which tells us, uh, sorry, property C, we need to look at property C, which tells us that this constant V integrated out on G has to be the same as the original random variable y integrated out on g for every g in script g. I'm just copying, I did nothing else but copied property c from the original uh, theorem. But now v is a constant, okay? So v is just a number, it's not random, it doesn't depend on omega, this is a constant. And g is very restricted because script g is just empty or full of omega. If I take script G, uh, sorry, if I take uh, G to be the empty set, then of course both sides are zero, it's not very interesting. If I take G to be omega, which is my other choice here, then what I get is that the expectation or the integral of this function V over all of omega, so I don't even need to put that in anymore, has to be the same as the integral of the original random variable Y over all of omega, so I don't need to add this uh, this g here because g is omega, so it's the indicator of omega is always one. And since v is a constant, it doesn't depend on anything. This expectation, of course, needs to be equal to the value of that constant. And so what I find is that v, my conditional expectation, is just e of y. Okay, so what I find is that the expectation of y given the trivial sigma algebra is just e of y. The trivial sigma algebra has no information content. So if I condition on nothing, then uh, if I essentially condition on no information, that just gives me back the overall expectation of y. Okay, so that, that was my next example. And then I have another example, kind of the other extreme, the other extreme example is going to go like this. So example, what if I now condition to the whole of F? What if I look at the expectation of Y given my full sigma algebra? So re recall that my sample space or probability space had omega, F and P. F is my full sigma algebra. What if I condition on this? And the answer is that, okay, let's again see um, 
what I what I need to satisfy here. So this is going to be a function v before before I show you the theorem again. This is going to be a function v which needs to satisfy properties a, b, c. Okay, so it needs to be g measurable, but g is f. This is my script g now. So it's f, so it just needs to be f measurable, which means nothing essentially. It just means it needs to be a random variable. It needs to have a finite mean, okay, that's fine. And this is the important bit. For any point, any, any set g in descriptive f sigma algebra, okay, whatever I do in descriptive f sigma algebra, this thing here, expectation of v on that set has to be equal to the expectation of my original random variable on that set. And this for every g in f. If I'm allowed to take every g in f, that essentially means that everywhere. I, this has to be true on a, on a huge number of sets. And then what you can easily check is the following. v equals to y works. v equals to y works. Okay. It is a random variable, so it's uh, f measurable or g measurable. It has a finite mean, okay? And if you just plug in v equals to y here, then of course the two sides are equal. So in other words, if you condition on the full information, if you condition on everything, then you didn't do anything with your random variable, you just get back your original random variable. So that was my next example. And then finally, I want to show you, essentially it's not an example, it's more like a definition. If I is a sigma algebra, and it's again a sub-sigma algebra of f, so not only it's a sigma algebra, but uh, it's also a subset of f, okay? And we have the following property. The conditional expectation of y, um, actually let me put here a function of y, given i is independent of i, okay, if it's independent of i, um, let me, is a constant, let me put it this way, is a constant, so remember that this thing here is a random variable. If this random variable is a constant for all measurable f's, all function f, this function is from real to real, right? From r to r and measurable. For all Bora Bora measurable functions. If this is a constant, if this random variable is a constant, it doesn't depend. It doesn't it doesn't depend on which part of i I'm in, then we say that y is independent of i. Then we say that y is independent of i. And if i happens to be a sigma algebra generated by another random variable, then we say that these two random variables are independent. So y and this other random variable are independent, okay? Now, if this is a constant, then it's not very hard to find out that this constant actually needs to be the expectation of f of y. And uh, I forgot to tell you, but uh, not only f needs to be measurable, but of course we also need for this to have e of f y to be finite. And so when this is the case, if we have independence of expectation of f y from what I condition on, in that case, this constant needs to be the expectation of f y itself. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the other kind of example, but it's more like a definition I wanted to show you here.